Today, I'm going to be talking about a topic that is a little bit tricky. We're going to derive the formula for the area of a trapezoid. First, I want you to think about what does a trapezoid look like? Remember, these are the shapes where you only have one set of parallel lines. So it's a quadrilateral with just one set of parallel sides. So the other two sides, the opposite sides, will not be parallel. Now what I want you to do is using your pegboard paper and something to write with, draw me a trapezoid and then we're gonna need an identical copy of that. Ready, go. You can see here I've made my two trapezoids and I have one, two, three, four, five, six on the bottom and three on that top base. Now that you've got your trapezoids cut out, I want you to try rotating them and see if you can make another shape. You might be tempted to make sort of a um, weird hexagon looking shape. That's not what I mean. I want you to make a shape that maybe you already know how to find the area for. You can see here that when I rotate my two trapezoids, I can make this parallelogram sort of looking shape to it, right? Okay, we're coming back to parallelograms. Are you noticing a theme here? <laughs> There's a reason why we started with that one. Okay, so when I rotate this now, how can I find the area of this shape? Again, think back to parallelograms. If you were thinking that I can cut this triangle off and move it over, you would be correct. Go ahead and give it a try with your paper trapezoids. Okay, so now you have something that looks like this, and again, this is now gone and we've moved it over. Now I want you to think about what would be the formula for the trapezoid. Now you might be thinking, well, base times height, that seems easy. All right, let's start there. So we know that the area of a parallelogram is base times height. I completely agree, however, when we're looking at a trapezoid, again, remember, think back to this shape right here. When I'm looking at this trapezoid, what base? Because if I use the bottom base, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's very different than the top base, which is three. So again, stay in your parallelogram here and think about what is the base of this whole shape? Because even you might be thinking, well, can I just take the base of this and then I know because I just did triangle, I'm gonna cut it in half, right? Because I only want one of them. Yes, you're on the right track. However, still be thinking about what is the base of this shape. So it's not enough to just say that it's the base. What is really, and if I think about it, here was the top of the trapezoid, right? And here was the bottom of the trapezoid. So really I'm adding the top plus the bottom and then I'm multiplying it by my height, right? Okay, so how am I gonna put this into a formula? Let's keep breaking this down. So I know that instead of writing my base, I know that really I need to think of it as base one, sometimes we call that base one, but the bottom base plus the top base, however you wanna say that. In math, we're just gonna call this base one and base two. So base one plus base two. I know that I need to add those together, right, to get the base of this parallelogram. Then I'm gonna be multiplying it by the height. Okay, well, it's still called a height even in a trapezoid, right? And again, I can think of my height right here, right? That is my height. Notice that the height goes straight up and down. Sometimes students get confused and think this is the height. That would be the slant height. This is the normal height here, okay? So I need to multiply that times the height. Okay, great, so far so good. Only one problem. If I do this math, base one plus base two, so I've got three plus six, that's gonna give me nine, times two is gonna give me 18. Is that really the area of just one trapezoid? No. I need to still take half of that, right? So I need to take all of this and divide by two in order to find the area for a trapezoid. Now you might be thinking, is there another way that I can write this? Yes, let me show you what that looks like as well. Sometimes, just like how we looked at one half times something when we were looking at the formula for a triangle, sometimes we'll see the same sort of notation for a trapezoid. Again, I'm taking one half of my two bases added together and then uh, multiplied times the height. Some other ways you might see it might look like this. 
you will see that these three different ways are all mathematically equivalent to write the same formula. So because I'm multiplying one half times the quantity of the bases times the height, I know because of the associative property of multiplication that I can switch these around, right? So notice that I could do adding the bases first and divide by two because dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half, then multiply times the height, mathematically equivalent. I could also take and add the bases together, take that quantity, multiply times the height, again divide by two, which is the same as multiplying times one half. This is also mathematically equivalent. So you might see area of a trapezoid written several different ways. If you understand where it came from, none of this should throw you off. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Marcia, area formulas, can't we just memorize them? You can, but look at how complicated this looks to potentially if you didn't see that conceptual behind it. So remember, we always wanna first stay in the conceptual, the concrete, right? Then we wanna think about being able to move to the pictorial, being able to draw a picture, and lastly, move to the symbolic. So we don't ever wanna start by teaching children the symbolic, we wanna first start in the concrete so that they really truly internalize where that formula is coming from. I hope now you have a better understanding of how to derive the formula for an area of a trapezoid, and you can see how the area of a trapezoid, the area of a triangle, and the area of a parallelogram are all very tightly woven, and we just tweak them slightly in order to get our different formulas.